So it's the beginning of October 2023 and Lidl of course have brought out their latest sewing machine. So as always I'm going to have a look around the box just to see this is what you're going to see in the shop. We have a threading function so a needle threader we have a few bits of accessories that are included some oil some thread. The machine's got 33 stitches it has a threader it says a four-step automatic buttonhole that will be amazing it's going to have uh, 750 stitches a minute not it's not really fast um but it's not slow either high piercing power so let's have a look for thicker fabrics it says uh change the presser foot uh, snap of a button so it's going to be snap uh, it's going to be snap the stitch length is goes up to 42 millimeters and the width is 4.8 millimeters which is great that's fine and um, we're going to have a book bobbin winding mechanism motor power is 70 watts which is really good got an accessories box inside there we've got a qr code to watch the video and of course we've got a three-year warranty which is going to be excellent so if you ever have a problem with this machine you can just take it back to Lidl and they'll sort you out but obviously inside the machine there should be a manual so let's open the box and find out more okay let's start removing the packaging and see what we've got inside now of course we've got our manual and that's really important for you to read so I think as soon as you get a chance um whoops the cover slipped out okay so we've got a cover with that have a look through the instructions read through it carefully make sure you know what you've bought look through this manual have a cup of tea bit of cake while you indulge in the excitement of trying out your new machine let's pull all the packaging out it's not always so easy i'm going to turn the box around grab the handle pull it out Now, if for any reason you have any problems and need to return the machine or send it away for repair, make sure you keep all the packaging. That will help secure your machine in its original box when you send it away or take it on its travels to wherever it needs to go. So don't destroy the packaging unless you really don't have space to keep it. There we go. It's a three pin plug and it's gonna go into the side pretty easily so we'll leave that to the side for a moment the way the pedal works we're just going to press it down like that so you put your heel there your toes there okay now we've got on here a list of accessories so the way we're going to remove that is we're going to lift up the presser foot so this is the presser foot and it's controlled by this lever at the back so lift that presser foot up and we can remove the instructions so it's showing us our accessories box we can just slide that out this way and inside there we'll find a whole load of goodies so let's turn that around pull this down and remove our packaging so open this out okay so these are going to be your thread stops so when you put your thread on your machine that's going to hold the spool in place so it doesn't slip slide and fly off this is a spool pin that's going to help you to do twin needle stitching so if you use a special needle that has two needles or using a twin needle or double rows whatever you call it that's going to help you with that a screwdriver to do some maintenance now you've got two types of screwdrivers they're useful for different aspects of the machine when you want to clean your machine these are useful when you want to change your needle that's going to be a useful one for that some thread to get you started these are your bobbins some people call them spools I call them bobbins but that goes at the bottom of your machine to help you with the bottom thread here you have a brush to help you with your cleaning and if you take the lid off you have a seam ripper or a quick and pick lots of different names again for that a 
piece of felt, again, that's gonna go on your spool pin to help for the thread, that's gonna help the thread to move round um, the spool pin easily. We've got some oil, again, with the maintenance of your machine. Make sure you oil your machine regularly, but when you do, clean your machine first. Some spare needles. Now this is a quilting bar. What that does is when you're doing rows of stitches um, on a quilt, on a blanket or a design, that's gonna help you keep a distance equal from the last to so get nice neat parallel lines. This is for your buttonholes, a needle threader. Now I always find it funny that we get these on the machines because they're, they're quite tricky to use. It'll be great for hand stitching. This is for your free motion embroidery. So when you want to drop your feed dogs, this machine doesn't allow that. So you cover them instead. So this plate is for your feed dogs. And then you've got your different feet. This is to um, insert buttons. This is a zip foot for special kind of um, zips. So it's a concealed zip foot, which is really cool because you don't often get those included in a machine and this is a regular zip foot okay so quite a good selection of accessories there i would say um, check them off your list make sure that they're all included and they are and that's going to help us to get started okay so we'll move all those out of the way for the moment and we're going to place the accessories box back on the machine we have a little hook there that needs to be pushed against the machine properly and slide that along and it fits in smoothly. Let's have a quick look through the instructions. Aim your camera at that QR code and tap the link. It'll take you to online support. And they've given, you, given it to you there. Start, they've given you a picture, pointing out all of the different parts of the sewing machine for you and everything that's included. So you'll be able to identify those easily. And if you don't know how to use those, pieces we'll continue to do that in this video but they show you how to use everything here they show you how to insert a needle so if you break a needle what to look out for how to use your presser foot lifter now it says it's a two-step presser lifter and what happens is when you lift up your presser foot sometimes you have really thick fabric you need an extra thrust so it has a spring in there to allow you to lift it up a little bit higher Snapping on your feet is a really easy process, but you've also got a release lever at the back. So that will help you release the feet, snap them on and release them easily. That's the quilting bar I was showing you. So that will help you to um, measure straight lines. How to insert your thread. We'll go through that in a moment. How to insert the bobbin thread as well. And how to place your thread through the thread map shows you how to use your needle threader i always find these tricky to use but i'm sure you'll find it easy we've got the automatic needle threader that's going to help any of you like me who wears glasses or has trouble spotting that needle eye and on the hand wheel we've got a mark on the machine that's brilliant in that's going to be really useful that's going to help us make sure that we thread our machines properly and overcome any problems before they even happen. How to use a threader. So it's invaluable source of information. And then, okay, so in this section, I'm gonna show you how to thread up the machine. So we'll start with filling up the bobbin, getting that ready and then we'll follow the thread map at the top. Now, occasionally you'll get the first bobbin in the machine. So let's remove the cover, release the front. And what you want to do, so open that catch and then pull the bobbin out. So we've got inside there a bobbin. Now, sometimes it doesn't come out so easily because it's been oiled and I can feel the oil on my fingers. So it's quite hard to release. Give it a good shake it'll come out but it's quite greasy so you might want to grab a scrap cloth and wipe it down right place our felt on the spool pin and we're going to place our thread on the spool pin have that placed on there 
we're going to use a spool cap. Now you have that one or that one. That one's better for the smaller thread. And we're going to release that thread. Bring that round the first guide, like that. And then we're going to follow the second guide. This is on a tension spring. So make sure we bring that round there and you can feel the tension. We're going to grab our bobbin. Catch that thread in there. Can you see how that goes in there? I'm going to just lift that and place it onto that thread guide like that. So you can see your thread going like Let's this. switch the machine on. Now what you want to do is make sure you push that bobbin to the guide over to the side there. Pull on your thread and press down on your pedal. So hold that thread and that thread falls out of your hand. Don't worry about it. Now what you don't want to do is lift and press your pedal. You want to keep you want to keep a nice steady pace. Now the only problem here is we don't get given quite a lot of thread. So if you fill that up too much, you're going to lose all your blue thread. But that's okay because I've decided that I'm going to use a different colour on the top. So I'm going to continue with that thread. So there you go. That's all the thread gone. And it's all on there. So we'll put the pink thread on the top now. Just remember, keep that thread coming from the top and place that guide on there. We're going to leave that there for a moment. We're going to continue with the bobbin. bobbin. You're going to grab the case. And what we're going to do is pull that thread out and just lift it straight in. Don't turn it upside down, put it straight in that way. Hold on to the bobbin so it doesn't rotate. But if you want to, you can see it's going anti-clockwise. We've got a slit here. We're going to put that thread into the slit and catch it around this spring and it clicks into place. So when I pull on that thread, I can feel a tension and it comes out slow. Let's put that into the bottom side of the machine. What we want to do is we want to make sure that needle is in its highest position. And in order to do that, what we need to do is use that guide that we have on the machine. So there's a groove on that hand wheel and we're gonna place it right at the top and it sits lovely and neatly against the seam of this machine. What that does is it brings this take-up lever to its highest point. When the hook is at its highest point, what it means is the machine is ready to sew the start of a new stitch. If you ever use the machine and start working from it being at a different position, it's very difficult for it to produce a good stitch. So you want to make sure that your hook is right at the top. And when that hook's right at the top, you'll find that this horn is going to sit into the machine nice and easily. Listen for the click. And it clicks into place. Now just remember, if you want to remove that bobbin, you can just pull on this catch and it grabs the bobbin for you and you can release that bobbin and that catch will stop that thread coming out. So then we can place that back in, just rotate it so the horn is at the top and it clicks into place. And we're going to go back to the top and start threading the top of the machine. We have our thread. We're going to come through that guide again and this time we're going to take the thread around this hook at the back and we're going to drop it down at the bottom. Now this bit is really important. At the start of the video I showed you where the presser foot lifter is. Okay, So this lever at the back needs to be up so that the presser foot is at its highest position. So we want that up. Okay, That thrust 
we don't need it up at the top there we just want it naturally at its highest position and the reason is there are tension discs in this area here it's going to make sure that that thread catches the space between the tension discs so i'm going to scoop that round and scoop it around the hook that we have at the top make sure that's at the top of the machine because again that's all about making sure that we're going to have our machine ready for the first stitch bring this thread down and make sure we catch this hook here just above the needle and the way i do that is i grab the thread with both hands and scoop that thread around the hook now the way the automatic needle threader works is there is a lever here that brings the thread around what we all do with our pink thread is we're going to catch that thread around that first hook and we're going to keep pulling down and can you see how this hook catches the needle push your pink thread so make sure this lever is all the way down push your pink thread all the way to the back and we're going to hold it nice and tight but relaxed so it releases nice and easily we've got a loop catch that loop and your needle is threaded we're going to bring this thread underneath and between the toes of the foot like that and what we're going to do now is i'm going to turn the hand wheel towards me so i'm going to bring the hand wheel towards me all the way down so that the hook goes all the way back to the top again make sure the hook goes all the way to the top don't stop here keep going until the hooks are at the top and then i can stop you can see the blue thread's been caught and i can pull that through and there's our two threads we've got pink thread and a blue thread and you can trim those threads catch them around the thread cutter and cut them just close the door of the bobbin, springs closed. I'm gonna grab a piece of fabric. I'm gonna do some stitching. Now, before we can do some stitching, I'm gonna do a few adjustments. Just check the machine is set to what we need it to do. On this dial, we have all the different stitches. Now, there are quite a lot. So we're only really gonna focus on the straight stitching and the zigzag. This dial here, shows us a different length of stitches and these are in millimeter you don't have to stick to number three or two you can stick to whatever suits you but i tend to work between two and a half and three for regular stitching the stitching i'm going to use is a black straight stitch now you can see we've got blue and red stitches those are special stitches we've got s2 and s1 those are going to be useful for lots of different things. But for again, just for the purpose of this video, we're just focusing on a straight stitch and a zigzag. Now up here, we have two more dials. Here we have a zigzag width and here is our tension. Now at the moment, the tension is set to automatic. So let's not worry about that. That's usually around four um, and it doesn't have a measurement unit or anything, it's just the guide that is giving us so the spring inside the machine is set to four so we'll leave it at that and on this machine you can change the stitch width so if i have a zigzag set but i have it set at zero on the width i'm just going to get a straight stitch if i adjust it the width of my zigzag is going to vary all the way up to uh, not five millimeters, but 4.8 millimeters, as the instructions said. So I'm set to a straight stitch. If I'm on a zero width, that needle sits right in the middle of the machine. If I change the width setting, can you see how that needle's moving over to the side? And what that means is when I'm doing stitching close to the edge or I'm doing top stitching or maybe overcasting or anything like that, but I want to use a straight stitch, that's gonna help me get closer to the edge of the fabric or even a zip. So it's really useful to be able to do that. So you can only do that when you're on a straight stitch. When you're on a zigzag, 
that width is going to be useful just to give you the different width of the stitches and of course on all the different utility stitches that you want i'm just going to place that fabric in the machine just a couple of folds and these lines here it's quite good because you've got 10 millimeters so that's one centimeter 20 millimeters at two centimeters but you've also got inches so five eighth of an inch so if you're following a pattern they tell you to follow that line at five eighth of an inch but if you struggle to follow those lines you can get these magnets these special magnets which you can place against that line it's difficult to move because it's magnetic once you're on it's good I don't like these ones because they're very difficult to move these are a lot easier because they're bigger so you can lift it up easier so you can follow that line and there you have it okay whole table stuttering place that down press the lever down so we get that foot back down and let's so a nice straight line now when you finish what you want to do is just make sure you bring that hook back up to the top that mark on your hand wheel will help you match it up to the top lift up your presser foot and you can release your fabric and cut it on the edge and there we go let's have a look at my sewing not very straight but the tension on that stitching is really excellent and it was nice and quiet it's quite powerful what i'm going to do is i'm going to fold that up a little bit more a few more times i'm going to see how thick so how many layers have i've got there one two three four five six layers of fabric see if i can do a straighter line this time just lift that hook back to the top and release our fabric and there we go that's gone through really smoothly didn't have any problems at all with that so it does do nice thick fabrics that tension is looking really good let's do a zigzag so what we want to do for a zigzag is we're going to rotate that over to a zigzag we're going to adjust the width a zero width will give us no zigzag so we need to make sure we've got some sort of zigzag let's go to three and let's see what happens there just going to go along here To the top and there we go a beautiful zigzag there you can't see the pink at the bottom you can't see the blue at the top so you've got perfect tension one more width let's try the zigzag all the way it's widest beautiful i also realize that some of you might be quite experienced sewers so if you are this is a really good stitch to help you along it's an overlocking stitch they're known as it's a sort of an overcast stitch what it's going to do is it's going to help prevent fraying so you won't so you won't use a regular zigzag stitch what you will use is this overlocking stitch and the settings are going to be this stitch here and you're going to set it to the widest zigzag you could change the tension you can see that the stitching on this one is a little bit puckered so um what you could do is reduce the tension down a little bit 
Now for less than £100, I think this is pretty good sewing machine and I think lots of you will really like it. It's strong, it's powerful, has a really good range of stitches. I'm installing the buttonhole foot here but I'm not going to demonstrate it. If you would like to see a video on how the buttonhole foot is used or other stitches, do comment below. Let me know if you like this video and if you did, please hit the thumbs up, subscribe and I'll see you soon.